If I had to describe Marvel Rivals in one sentence, it would be Overwatch in third person with superheroes, but that does it a disservice because it's really, really good. It is basically Overwatch, if you know what that is. It's an arcade shooter. You have, well, in Overwatch, it's now 5 vs 5, but it used to be 6 vs 6, and this game is 6 vs 6. Six people on a team against six people on the team. You have a fight over a payload, which is, you know, sort of a, a vehicle that you need to sort of push forward, and the enemy team will try and push you off, or vice versa, you try and stop it, or capture points, which you try and, you know, push your way onto and capture. Uh, that's the gist of it. You have Healers, tanks, damage dealers, which I think are self-explanatory. They give them other names like Vanguard, support, duelist, but don't worry about any of that. And it's really good. It's so based on Overwatch. You can see the inspiration, some of the abilities, sometimes to the detriment, because I think the abilities and sort of ideas in Marvel Rivals are better than Overwatch for the most part. The characters are more detailed. There's more depth. There's more abilities, more passes. They're team-up abilities, you know. If Groot is there and Rocket is on the same team, Rocket can jump on his shoulder. The Venom and Spider-Man are on the same team. Venom symbiote can power up Spider-Man, that kind of thing. So there's lots and lots going on, but it's not too hard that you, you, know, you can't learn it and just jump into it. But it's definitely very rewarding when you do sort of stick with it and progress. You know, you, you really notice yourself getting better with these characters. The maps are fun. I think there's you know, a couple of tweaks needed here and there. My biggest dislike of the maps actually kind of comes from defending from when respawning. You know, I have a 10 second kind of time to wait to respawn roughly. Then I've got to run back, which might take 30 or 40 seconds. If I'm a character like Groot, who doesn't have any mobility really, it can just take forever. Whereas a character like Spider-Man might just, you know, zoom and fly there. So... Kind of feel like some of the slower characters maybe need like a speed boost out of the respawn or I don't know. That's just a random idea. But that's just my one biggest sort of pet peeve. But for the most part, I think the map's really interesting. I like that, you know, there's buildings, destructible environments. That's really fun. You know, I can, if someone's shooting from above, I can often blow up the floor. I can just, you know, smash a building away to open up the playing field, which can be really useful. The heroes are very, very mobile. They are superheroes. They can fly, they can swing around. And the third person really facilitates that in a way that first person doesn't in Overwatch. So I'm a huge, huge fan of that. And I think that's partially what makes the difference. These abilities are dynamic and brave. The movement's more exciting and you know Doctor Strange not even an ultimate ability you can make a portal from anywhere on the map to basically anywhere else your whole team can sneak attack you can do funny things put it in front of the enemy spawn and the other side in front of the uh, the abyss and he can just like run up the spawn and fall off uh, you know most teams get wise to that but it's a pretty funny novelty move you know there's cool stuff you can do the interesting stuff the portal mechanic by, with Doctor Strange by the way don't know how they programmed it it feels like it works incredibly incredibly well really cool stuff like that Spider-Man Venom Rocket they can scamper up walls they can climb about you know, Black Panther as well, double jump off, you know, everything just works smoothly. The art style is cool, it reminds me of Arcane, so I really like everything. Now, let's fly into our tier list, I know a lot of you guys are here for that. So up first, we have Venom. Venom is S tier for sure, he just dives in, he can't be dealt with, dives out, you know, he's web swinging around. Uh, his damage is high, he's hard to kill, he's disruptive, the enemy team have to deal with him, which just buys your team so much time, he's incredibly good. Next up is Magneto. Very defensive, he's got a shield, he's got a barrier, he can shoot from good range. His ultimate actually draws in projectiles as well before he throws down this massive ball of metal which can just wipe out two or three people sometimes. Uh, but the main most powerful thing with him is his team up with Scarlet Witch. The team up with Scarlet Witch is just these blades of metal which just devastate people. Uh, it's a 30 second cooldown, feels like an ultimate, it's too good, it's just way, it's really strong. Next up is Hulk who is kind of like Venom, he can just jump in, cause some disruption, but whereas Venom's basic attack is sort of a multi-hit, uh, mid-range ability that can headshot, Hulk just has to get in melee range, it can't headshot, you're just punching people. He's more sort of vulnerable, he doesn't do as much damage, but he's still very, very good. He has some stuff going for him. Doctor Strange is probably the closest thing we have to a Reinhardt, a sort of regular tank, although I should point out that... Hulk is D.Va because he has like the little D.Va form, uh, you know, Bruce Banner pops out, but it doesn't feel as well incorporated. Um, but still, Hulk is very, very fun when you're jumping and smashing. Doctor Strange, portals, uh, you know, that's really fun. We talked about that. He's got always just a big shield and an ultimate, which just when you see the team fight because everyone gets turned into spirit form. Uh, but it's lower impact in general than the other tanks and characters here. Groot can put down walls, which is very disruptive. Actually quite high damage, though it's kind of fake damage because it's slow damage, so it, you're kind of just boosting the enemy healers. Uh, <laughs> Uh, ultimate charge but it is nonetheless very very good very fun and his ult is a kind of root that pulls people in and sticks them there four is very very strong when he's allowed to do what he wants he's basically s tier but he can be shut down a lot by you know evasive character stuns he's kind of a bruiser whereas the other characters are tanks uh but i do enjoy him when he can do what he wants to he's good but he's not consistent and on the other hand, we've got SPDR, who's also kind of a bruiser rather than a tank, but she's a ranged character and she sets down traps and mines. Very defensive, so she's very map dependent, um, but also the enemy team can kind of play around her quite a lot, which I think shuts her down. But she's very fun, and all these characters can do very well. 
Next up, we're going to have Punisher and Hella, who are long range damage, and it's very high damage, which is basically what puts them in S tier. Also, very, very strong ultimates. They have, you know, pretty decent movement options, and, you know, Punisher's shotgun will just destroy any tank or anyone who gets close to him, honestly. Whereas Hella can just headshot anyone, you know, someone's stunned, she just wins. Her ultimate makes her fly into the air with a thousand health, so she can be at one hit point and just suddenly she's in the air with more health than a tank, uh, raining down destruction. Crazy strong. Storm has a really, really strong ult, which is just a tornado that just spins around with you in the middle of it and just destroys people. But aside from that, she's very slow moving in the air and the damage and boost she brings, I don't think, kind of equal what Iron Man brings. She's also a slow moving flying character. But here's a sort of fast mode. His shooting is more dynamic, faster paced, and he would probably be S tier if it wasn't for Punisher and Hela taking him out. Black Panther is kind of Genji, but a Genji who gets into a lot more trouble, who can be really devastating, but isn't just consistent just because there are better flanking characters that do what he does. Magic is kind of a sort of bruiser slash assassin. Um, she does really good kind of, you know, steady damage and, you know, teleports around the enemy team. It's kind of hard to deal with, but not quite enough to get into S tier. Spider-Man, easy S tier. Um, what a crazy character. Uh, he right clicks you from a distance, then he auto targets you with E, dashes in, press F, uh, you're basically defeated. He has a combo ability with Venom to make that more consistent. He can be damage boosted by someone like Mantis or Rocket Soul. Uh, just, if anyone's even at like 70% health, that's not a tank. He just defeats them. Easy. No problem. And then his ult is a spin to win, win button ability, where he just shoots web all around him in an area, uh, which can just kill two to four people sometimes, you know. Scarlet Witch, the team-up ability of Magneto, I mean, arguably puts her in S because like, he's kind of in S because of the team-up. But she's a little bit worse overall, I think. She has slow damage, that's auto-target. She has a big explosion ult, which is devastating, but is quite easily countered. Um, team play from your team, if you're using it, can boost it. But yeah, it doesn't quite make the cut for me uh, to S tier, but still very, very good. Can turn invisible, crazy. Star Lord flies around, shoots people, very, very good. Basically Tracer. Um, his ult isn't crazy, it's Soldier 76, but he can fly anywhere super fast. Uh, but you know, he can kind of be a little bit vulnerable. Namor is kind of like Groot, that the damage is slow and fake damage, so you know, healers can heal it. Um, he has turrets, you know, octopuses which shoot people, which is going to be a large part of his damage. Uh, but I do love playing Namor. He's got this kind of a, you know, if he right clicks someone, all his turrets focus that person as well for a super attack, the more he lands his sort of thrown trident, which is a bit like Hella's attack, but slower and less damage. Uh, he can charge up his octopus to get more turrets, but they just don't make the impact and they can be taken out by the enemy team in my opinion loki very very good heals uh very good single target heals he makes illusions which can all sort of heal the same target you're healing because he's got illusions and he can kind of disappear and swap places with them he's hard to defeat that is the best thing a healer needs because we're under the healers now we have mantis who's an easy s tier she's got really good healing pretty fast you know when she's at full health so she can get her back from the respawn or move about where she needs to when she's not being uh focused um but she can damage boost people, heal people really well, damage boost herself to you know, take out people that might attack her. And her ultimate is basically Lucio's super good shield, everyone's safe. Speaking of super good shields, everyone's safe. Uh, it's not a shield per se, but Zen Yata's ability from Overwatch is basically Luna Snow's ult. She just heals everyone around her constantly for basically a million healing. Uh, basically just counters any enemy's ults. It's really, really good. Just like uh, Mantis kind of does. <laughs> And yeah, she's good. She clicks to heal, you know, she has to shoot friendlies to heal them, but you shoot enemies to damage them, just like Anna, which is also what Loki does, I should say. Jeff, unfortunately, going to be our other C tier. He has really, really high healing, but not really for himself, and he has to be close range to do it. In the game where you have devastating, you know, damage characters, he just can't really survive is my problem with him, though his ult can kind of be funny and win some team fights. Adam has a res, which is his ultimate. It's just like Mercy's old, uh, ultimate from Overwatch. Very, very, very strong, but... Aside from that, he's just super vulnerable to being defeated. His healing isn't particularly better than the other characters, nor is his damage. Then we've got Rocket, who I think is also S tier. His healing is very slow, but super long range, super safe, super area heals. You know, these bouncing orbs of healing that just pass through everyone while he's completely safe. If someone does jump him somehow, uh, he can just fly into the air, glide around, climb over walls. Um, the orbs heal himself, you know, whereas it's a bit harder for, say, Jeff to heal himself unless he throws down the bubbles, which, you know, he wants to heal other people with, etc., etc., etc. et, cetera, et, cetera, et cetera. Rocket is the hardest healer to kill. He will always have the lowest deaths if you're playing him right. He'll also have the highest healing because he can just, you know, shoot his orbs through everyone and they might bounce back and hit someone else still. And he'll just heal everyone so much. They are slow healing. So, you know, if someone bursts someone down, he can't keep them alive like, you know, any of the other healers. But his just overall monstrous healing and his ability to survive make him S tier. Oh, and he can resurrect people as well. It's not an ultimate ability. It's one person every 40 seconds from this beacon. Really, really good. So, yeah. If you have... uh 
60 S tier characters on your team, you have probably won the game. But it can vary. There's some really good stuff the other characters can do in A tier. When you start to have a lot of characters from C and B tier, that's when you start to have problems. Although they can all do well, especially the B tier characters if they're supported in the right team comp. And they're all very fun. So I think they've done a really good job with that. And that kind of concludes the tier list. And that kind of concludes the review. I think it's better than Overwatch by far. I think it's a really fun team-based game if you're looking for a team-based shooter, something fun to play. You can play it more casual level. The competitive is really, really fun. And it just needs some balance tweaks is my main concern. Some ultimates just win fights and are ridiculous. Uh, and yeah, hope you enjoyed this. I'm not going to do many videos on Marvel Rivals probably, unless this video completely blows up and does incredibly well. But otherwise, thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.